Okay, welcome back. This is the last stream for Errant Kingdom until the the rest of the game is released, and I don't know when that will be. So we are doing finishing off with the Nomad Chapter Five. Uh, if you'll recall, um, trying to remember. I did not see. Okay. I missed saving something for the night, but we'll take. I'll take care of that off stream. Um, but yeah, Nasreen. Um, she was voluntold by Ungrav that she's gonna help him stop Nova, along with um. The ambassador and the knight. So none of the three know that they've all been chosen, so to speak. Um, and when Nova tried to crash their little meeting, um, Ungraf told Nasrin to think of someone to help them return, basically. And the person that uh, Nasrin thought of was Olivia the Seal, Knight Commander of um, the castle guards, basically. Um, and uh, obviously, this is when you choose your romance, if you choose one at all. You can choose no one. But there were some fun in that. Um, and so they uh, admitted to having feelings for each other. And Livia took Nasreen inside to spend the night in the castle because she couldn't bear the thought of sending Nasreen off on a night like she's had. So I'm trying to pick it up. Dream of an old city that glimmers like a reflection in turbulent waters. It dissolves in a cloud of ashes and fire, rebels and soldiers flooding the streets, their blades drawn, their thundering feet stirred dust and drag blood, and the gods weep. Then I dream of a fallen figure sitting in the dust, their face concealed by a dark hood, a long cloak in tatters as it trails behind them with the wind. They're weeping, their hands bloodied and trembling. There are bodies beneath them, faceless ones, shapeless almost. There are daggers, too. The universe seems close over their bowed head and whispers, I'm sorry, it will never come to pass again. And then it all fades away. Look in an unfamiliar way. One definitely fancier than anything I could ever afford. And as I turn and touch silky sheets before I could fully digest my surroundings, I saw a figure backlit by the morning sun. You're here, in your nightwear. Yes, that is our lovely night commander, but her hair loose, and I just, oh my gosh. Like every CG, the first time I see it, I just have to stare for a few moments. But what's funny is, if you pick Livia as the ambassador of the night, you don't recognize her right away. But the nomad does. Which says something about the nomad's joke. Did you stay with me all night, Livia? She rushes slightly, pushing a strand of hair behind her ears as she shyly averts her gaze. I return to my quarters to change and with a plan to rest, but when all traces of shyness are gone, her blue eyes meet mine across the room, and she trips straighter, squaring her shoulders. I was compelled to return. Compelled, eh? Hmm. Compelled. Yes. It takes everything in me not to grin. I push the sheet aside and swing my legs over the edge of the mattress, my bare feet finding the polished wooden floorboards. I place my palm upon the bare space beside me, thumbing my fingers. Would you be compelled to join me? I swear I don't fight, despite any rumors you might have heard. 
she starts to stand with a little hesitation, and she's looking at me differently, with a little less disdain and a lot more affection. Something I could get used to, I think. Then she's crossing the room and taking a seat beside me, close enough that our thighs have touched her. I feel a strange, unfamiliar thrill. Is this what yearning feels like? So, how are you feeling? I contemplate that for a moment, wondering if my head feels heavy because I'm in such close proximity to Olivia. Or if it's because Nova scooped up my brain, rattled it around, and stuck them back in my skull again. Honestly, confused, if maybe. Tired? A lot. Olivia frowns and settles with the sleeve of her nightgown before she shifts, angling herself so she's facing me. The leg curls up beneath her. It's nice to see her like this, relax. The armor we began to break down last night, feeling a little looser. Marked by Ungrath is no small thing, answering. To be marked by any god. Truthfully, I was worried something would happen to you. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't bear the thought of leaving you alone. She gestures to the seat that she's occupying, and I spot her sword, unsheathed, leaning against the window beside it. I'm sure if any of my knights saw me wielding it wearing this, they'd assume I'd gone mad, but her smile is right. It's not a little mischievous. I don't leave you unguarded, despite my belief that you don't really need my protection. Damn straight, but it's a nice thought. I match her shoulder with my own. Are you saying I'm capable, my commander? Hmm, maybe. Maybe I've also yet to see your full capabilities. Her cheeks flush when I grin at her. I refrain from raising my brows, but it takes great effort. I think you should talk about your predicament. Uh, of course, we're going to take the third option. Humor me first. I reach for her hand, the one still idly toying with her sleeve. Lily isn't usually one for filling with things. Her stature calm and collected, cool as stone, but she seems restless here. So she reaches out with a little hesitation, watching as we lose her fingers and rest our joined hands upon the bed between us. Humor you have. The things we said last night, did you mean your part? Is this something we can really have? She swallows, looking her lips before she turns her head to catch my gaze. If I'm not mistaken, then there's true affection there, for me. I hope. She pauses for what feels like a lifetime, and then... I meant what I said. Of course I did. I almost let out the breath I'd be holding, but I managed to be subtle about it. Then she smiled at me, big and beautiful, and a small laugh falling from her lips. She works her gaze, looking away. I reach out with my free hand and carefully graze her jaw with gentle fingertips, coaxing her to turn back to me. She does, and I let my touch linger, her skin soft and warm. We edge closer, closer, every second that passes, feeling like a stretch to eternity. The only thing I can think about is the memory of her lips on mine, and I want. I really want. And so I take. A gentle sigh falls from her flesh lips. As I press against mine, it's every bit as wonderful as I recall. It smells like the night blooms that I fell into last night, like fresh air with the faintest, faintest hint of armor polish. And it's so full that it makes me ache. Soft but solid, strong and somehow gentle, all the same. When we part, she's smiling, and I'm convinced that she really does want whatever this rapidly blossoming thing between us is. I can tell something bothers her, and it's more than obvious what it is. Her gaze keeps looking to my chest, to the place where that mark had burned so brightly last night. Unconsciously, my hand drifts to clutch at my shirt there, and Olivia frowns deeply. Is it bothering you? No, I can't feel a thing. I'm just painfully aware. Right. I imagine you would be, yes. Being marked by a god is no small thing. You should consult Marja at once. Maybe even a demon. I got turned. Don't you think I should vacate the palace? I hate to get you into trouble. Harboring a spy like myself is truly asking for a great punishment if caught. Her eyes widen briefly before she catches herself and calms, settling back into neutrality. I wonder if she sometimes forgets that's what I am. The target, the enemy, essentially. At least to those who rule this place. I mean, we were that to her once, but certainly not anymore. Right. Can I assist you in moving freely about the palace? Or even King Donut? Broken many rules by having me stay here, but... As I said, I simply couldn't just 
send you back home. I intend to help you figure out whatever Ungrat intended to achieve in marking you this way. Let me talk to Masha for you, Nestri. If she feels the need to speak to you herself after that, and she will surely make her way into town, as she often seems to do. If you trust that it might help, then of course. She sighs deeply, apparently at war with the thought. I understand that tensions are high between her and the Grand Archmage, but Masha has shown me nothing but respect and grace in the short time I've known her. I'm loath to leave you, but I should go before the palace truly awakens. Right. Yes. That would be a good idea. Though I am sorry our time together has been so short. I bring her hand to my lips and press a gentle kiss to her knuckles. I gaze fixed upon her face as I do so. I'm basking in her, taking her in, and committing her to memory. Not that I can forget such a sight. The fearsome angel of death in her nightwear, golden curls spilling over broad shoulders, her pink cheeks, her pink. I see blushing, I see a blush. A privilege as precious and as rare as any. If you know anything about me by now, it's that I don't let things like guards and knights get in my way when there's something I want within reach. Yes, it's one of my favorite things about you, I'm discovering. Well, scandalous, I'm sure that may be. She reluctantly pries herself from my grip, moving to stand and brushing down the front of her nightgown. She seems restless all of a sudden, but she doesn't quite know what to do with herself or how to give a proper goodbye to the spies she's been recording. So I stand to join her in an attempt to relieve some of that tension. I lean in and press a soft kiss to her cheek, pulling away with a sly smile. I look forward to when we get to meet again sooner rather than later, I hope. We will make it so. Just don't be getting into any trouble on account of me. My lady, I love trouble. <laughs> After expertly escaping from the balcony of the room Libya placed me in, I make my way into the palace garden. The sun is still low in the sky, and a few guards milling about on the outskirts of the castle. I managed to slip away with little to no fuss. That is until I find myself face to face with an all too familiar face. Someone I shouldn't at all be surprised to bump into in these parts. Well, 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 what have we here? Heard a crazy rumor that you spent the night within the wall, a cozy in bed, and I was a pretty night watching over you. You work fast, I'll give you that. I scowl and roll my eyes, willing my cheeks not to heat. As I push past him, I'm eager to get the hell out of here. Did you come to collect me? Yes, actually. Your presence is required at the guild. Immediately. I stop in my tracks. He knows about Livia. You've been up to all sorts of naughty things lately, haven't you, Nassim? Yes. As we traverse the sewers, that sinking feeling that consumed me last night settles like a brick in the pit of my stomach. I don't know what I'm walking into, and the conversation I had with Raiden the last time we were surrounded by the Jerry Walls comes rushing back. I reach out and grab his arm. What is it? Uh, first we're going to pick this one, the cutting one. I need to know you've got my back in there, no matter what. I watch a throat bob as he swallows, his dark eyes flashing. His usual confident, cocky bravado isn't quite present, and that terrifies me. Raiden? He snaps out of it quickly, placing his hand on top of mine. It's supposed to be reassuring, I suppose, but it feels stilted. I told you, didn't I? As long as your dagger isn't in my back, then I'll be watching yours. Plus, you've gone and got yourself your very own night commander. Scary one, she is. I doubt anyone would be looking to cross you if she has her say. Like Livia has any quiet down here in the underbelly where it smells like shit. Touche. We keep walking, nothing but the quiet drip of the wastewater and the distant skittering of rats setting the mood. Raiden not being in his usual unrelentingly chatty mood is about as bad a, as bad a woman as any in my eyes. If I remember correctly, we're coming up to the entrance of the guild. Raiden stops and pulls out his pocket knife, tossing me a wounded look over his shoulder. Just tell the truth, all right? If you tell the truth, then it'll all be okay. He presses the blade to his palm. Before I can make the cut, I reach out and grab his wrist, squeezing tightly. Can I do the honors? He frowns at me briefly, his gaze flicking between my face and the blade, but, and then he nods once. It seems. 
Go for it. He offers me the handle, but I scrap and produce my own knife. He grins. Maybe I just want to prove myself. And so I make the cut. A clean shadow slices in my palm that barely even pinches, but draws enough blood for the magic to detect. At least I hope. Rayla didn't model herself like she did it anyway. I take a deep breath and step forward, trying my best not to hesitate in pressing my palm against the wet stone. The bricks shudder beneath my fingertips, and a familiar light shines through the crack. I step back, and the doorway appears. Raiden cracks me on the back as he shoves past me, walking backward and finger gunning as he goes. There he is. There is the bastard I know. So you're not a traitor. Congratulations. Now, if you had picked Raiden as a nomad, that goes a little differently. Because he already knows what the hell happened the night before, or has some idea. Come on, no time to waste. As we step into the armory, we can face to face with Layla, who, by all accounts, looks annoyed. Shoot your sweet turn, little snake. Now strings go at 60 in one piece, all things considered. I don't suppose you can win me any more than he hasn't, can you? Not a chance in hell. Cool. She cocks her head in the direction of the guild's treasure room. They're in there. Well, keep, keep them waiting if I was you. Rita shrugs and strides onward, winking at Layla as he goes. He seems to suddenly have no qualm about facing Nadri. I wonder if his desire to impress him at least is very real fear of whatever he about to transpire. Layla arches a brow at me and I follow the snake into the pit. The door closes to him with a pointed thud, and I feel every hair on my body standing on end. Adri is leaning against the wall between the drawers full of stolen goods and what looks like a mage's workbench, using a small sharp knife to pick the dirt from their nails. They don't flinch as we approach, but when their eyes finally do meet mine, I'm struck by how cold they seem. Raiden, Nazi, thank you for coming. So, um, we're going to pause for a moment. I think I finally figured out why certain characters appeal to me. And it's because of something that someone else has brought another them entirely. You're talking about one character having a crush on another character and then being like, I don't know if I want to be with you or be you. And I think that's what it is for me with um, certain characters. It's not so much that I want to be with them. I want to be them. So, just proof for that. Then Adri steps forward and reaches out to ruffle Raiden, ruffle Raiden's fluffy white hair. And his smile is positively beaming. He screams like a son would have been lavished by a parent. I wonder just how advantageous their apparent closeness might be to me at this moment. I thought I told you to stay out of trouble, and here you go getting caught up with the god of death himself. My eyes widen as he ran. The grin upon his face immediately disappears, replaced with a childish frown. What the fuck? I knew it was something weird, but you really met one grass? But it, does he fit? I heard he's really fit, all pale and chesty. Ray, please. I find myself gawking like an idiot as Ray then laughs heartily. Adrian simply looking on fondly, smiling like they're proud. I'm totally less afraid of possibly having my head cut off. Yeah. Well, he's handsome in a way, I suppose. Well, hold on. I look at them, trying to figure out if they're fucking with me, or if they really just implied that they too have met death himself. Handsome and intelligent, charming even. Am I correct? I nod slowly. You know, when I was awoken by searing pain in my chest last night, I expected to be dragged into the other realm myself. Instead, I woke with a bit of a headache, and my aegis was gone. Say what? I wonder why that might be. Raiden looked at a low whistle, breaking the awful fast that hung heavy between us. Well, shit, in my stream. Remember his words well now. Snakes and champions, spies and fools. You're the snake he spoke of. Andrew nods once. I have served and grasped my whole life as the leader of the skilled and beyond. As spies and assassins, we lead by his example and provide him his bounties. We are the church hands and the whispers in the night that those who preach his words speak of. We are the gentle inevitability of death. Ingrat saw potential in my devotion. He summoned me many years ago, 
forsake his ages and use his wisdom and power to further the reach of the guild. But all things must come to an end, and I fear I have failed him. To have this taken from me is not surprising, but knowing that one of my own now bears it tells me he believes in me too. It's only just a little. Um, I always tell her, or them, excuse me, them, this one, because it feels like it'd be wrong to say nothing, to let them believe that when that's not necessarily true. It would be easy to stand here and say nothing, to let energy believe they've shamed their beloved God, but it's not something I can bring myself to do. I can't do this alone. I barely know what I have to do. I believe there's more, much more to it than that. I don't think you failed him. I think he was simply protecting you. Raiden and Audrey exchange a look, and I really think that this might be the longest he's gone without Kathy. What do you mean? You mentioned that if someone born in Vistress, that I would have more protection, but no one would find it harder to reach me as I'm not of this land. The Aegis shields, but the body and mind, having no true connection to this place, is what truly protects, I think. Still trying to figure it out. Safe to say, it's a little jarring being yanked into another room without any warning. So what now? What are you supposed to do? He implied that the king and queen are going to choke Nova until it breaks. I believe they've made a deal with Nova themselves, and to the detriment of the kingdom. Then this is why things have felt so wrong. Like everything was falling out of my grasp. You were being betrayed, just not by your people, but by Novak themselves. Then I guess the real question is, why does Novak want their kingdom to fall? Of course it would be Novak, then of course it would be those traitors who sit upon the throne. Which brings me to the other reason for calling you here. I need you to infiltrate the palace tonight. There are whispers of a meeting with Queen Adora and King Thaddea. They're apparently looking to summon your fellow newcomer, Vitrian, the knight and the ambassador. I want to know what happens at that meeting, and I know that Raiden is the only one I can trust with getting in and out undetected. I glare at Raiden. I know he can do it, and knows the palace like the back of his hand, but I also know he likes to get distracted, be it by gossip or by pretty shiny demons. There's also a royal ball in the kingdom of Adrian next week. I'm of the understanding that the entire court will be attending. This visit could be of some significance to whatever they may be planning, or it could simply be a chance for us to get the upper hand and retrieve some information while they're in more vulnerable position. Either way, I'd like you to try and acquire invitations and attend. I don't have anything pretty to wear. Andrew smiles at him, their eyes crinkling in the corners. I suspect the finest for a is genuine, and his for them is in return. Like parent and child. I'm sure you'll find a creative way to find something, right? You always do. You also have a time to spy at your side. That I will. Was that everything? Adri then turns her eyes to me once more, and the day is scrutinizing, but there's a new sense of softness there. Maybe even reverence. I truly been gained their respect simply because I bear these ages. There's so many things I want to ask, and so many things I could learn. As quickly as they've seen me let down that shield, they hold so close to back up again. That will be all. Report back to me come morning. Understood. Nazarene, do not take this blessing for granted. Now go. You're both dismissed. And with that, each leaves. Well, things just got interesting, didn't they? Like Fancy. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm parched. Drink? I said, my eyes still fixed upon the door where Ed and exited. Still don't know what the fuck is going on. Now, uh, if you romance right in, um, you don't need the uh, pressure room for a while. With Raiden heading back to his house, wherever the hell that might be, to get geared up for a mission, I decide to head to the tavern and attempt to form some kind of plan. It's relatively empty, but then I spot two familiar faces in the far corner. Faces I'm incredibly happy to see. Hey, Nazreen! Ruth waves their arms in my general direction, the enthusiastic response making Eric sink a little deeper into his seat, his hand tightening around his tankard. Mind if I join you? Of course not. How are you? I hear congratulations are in order. Rue? Oh, right. Gossiping is rude. I'm working on it. Is nothing sacred here? There's not even a proper town paper, and everyone seems to know my affairs. 
Just happy for you is all. You deserve a little slice of joy just as much as everyone else does. Eric closed his throat and Bruin nudges him in the shoulders. And the way that he went is I suspect it was with a little too much pad behind it. Say strength is tricky. Then I remember I'm basically staring down Livia's dad and I immediately feel itchy. I'm not about to give you the shovel attack, Nasreen. I think you already know that I'll kill you with my bare hands if you even think about hurting her, right? I stare at him for a second, trying to figure out if he's joking or not. Right? Definitely not joking, then. Yes, a threat tactfully hit him behind a handsome smile. Nice. I wouldn't dream of it. Besides, it's well of you to think you'd get to murder me before Lydia did herself. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I um, wrote a fanfic, and it's um, basically two soldiers get together. And the uh, female soldier's brother is like, you know, I would threaten to kill you if you hurt her, but I'm pretty sure she can do that on her own. And she's like, damn straight. That showed you, Sir Nistrum. Eric brings his tankard up to his lips to match his growing smile. Sure did. So it's true then, you and Liz? I don't know. That's, um, this is a dice pick. I haven't pulled the dice out yet. Dice, dice, pull the dice. Dice, dice, Okay, D4 again. On number, we pick the first option, even number, we pick the second option. Four, second option. I never reveals their secrets. Yeah, and bears don't shit in the woods. Your face is at all matching. <laughs> Perfect. I've never picked that one. I think it'll be good for her, and her for you in return. I'm glad you think so. I'd better be going. I have things to prepare for. Subtle. I offer them both a polite smile, but as I move to stand, Rue's hand whips out, the fingers curling around my wrist. They hold me tightly, a look of worry in their big, dark eyes. The land whispers, Nasreen. You've been touched by something not of this realm. I can smell it on you. It smells like death. My gaze flicks between them and Eric. My fingers curling into a fist where Gru grips me. I can feel my chest getting warm and tight. And Eric simply frowns at me, too polite or too proud to ask. I set my lips in a thin line and gently pry myself free of Rue's solid hold. He breathes once, twice, and then withdraws as they weren't quite sure that they ever touched me. It's going to be okay, Rue. I be careful. The gods are not always kind to us. I know at once, finally stepping away. Eric still frowns, still stares. You think about what Umrah said, what he implied. That maybe, just maybe, the gods had a hand to play in Eric's fall from grace. That Newell saw him as a threat to their plans and conducted the events that led us all here. I feel the weight of his gaze long after I turn away and long after I exit. Traversing the past walls and breaking in feels like a breeze, and Raiden is gleeful when we do it in record time, apparently. The grass is crisp beneath our feet, and the familiar blue glow of the night blooms welcome us as we part the bushes and float inside. But something makes me sad. I can feel a pull, like I'm being compelled. Come on, our opening is coming. I wave him off and he hops, tap, tapping his foot impatiently. I feel the same way I did the one time I the last time I was here. This close to the chapel, it seems a gentle thing. It's heart beats pulsing beneath my feet. This time I follow it, unafraid and willing to see what tale it has to tell. I faintly register a rating calling my name and hear his footsteps following me. I'm grateful, but I have to do this in no second, just on my My palms find the wood of the heavy doors, and I go with little resistance, opening with a quiet creak. It almost sounds like a whisper. But I listen carefully. I wonder what it would say to me. I follow my instincts and look to the tall ceilings above. The four abstract winged statues on the high pillars gaze upon me just as they did before, and just as I suspected, they feel alive. This whole place is. 
land beneath my feet in the wall that encased me. Ah, so the chapel lured another into it. Trap. I snapped out of my reverie, but that, vo that voice achingly familiar. A flash of stormy silver and sharp teeth in the din. What is that? What lingers here? Lucian steps into a dash of moonlight that cuts through the cracked windows and spreads their hands placatingly, their expression playful. I don't think they'll be getting a straight answer. Only the faithful and those hoping the thoughts aren't real come here. Some seek to be comforted, some to be proven wrong. Which one are you? Okay, so we're going to let the dice decide again. Uh, since there's three options, I grabbed my D6. So one or four, we pick the first one. Two or five, we pick the second. Three or six, we pick the third. Four. No, wait, it wasn't that one. Sorry. The Facebook. Without hesitation, with much conviction, I respond. The faithful. Lucian tips her head curiously. Interesting. I suppose he despises and shadows must believe in something. They then look to the door, and I wonder why Raiden didn't follow me inside. He left the snake waiting. He could have followed me in if he wanted. Lucian laughs, placing a hand on their chest. Finally enough, he despises this place, because it gives him the creeps, whatever that means. The way they talk about him. It's fine. The way a lover would. She spoke of you earlier, you know, Kimasha. You must truly mean something to her, our angel of death. I always thought that name was too harsh for such a beautiful soul, soft at the core, despite all of her armor. Anyway, I shall leave you to your pondering, answering. Don't get too lost in your thoughts in here, will you? A dangerous thing. I scoff, watching as Lucian floats on by, wondering why they even bothered to talk to me at all. Um, well, in from Raiden or Lucian, uh, that conversation is when you can choose the poly route or not. Because, um, whether you actually pick Raiden or Lucian, Raiden will follow Raiden, and you get that chance to, um, make it clear you want both of them, or just one of them. It always seems weird to just pick one, and you should be thinking of them as a couple. But um, I like the way Raiden and Lucian, like there is potential for more between them, but they're keeping it light and basically just about the same. I think um, there may be an opportunity to kind of nudge them into making the relationship more, even if you don't romance them, but I could be wrong. I know there is an option. There will be an opportunity to get Eric and Marsha back together if the does have said as much. Anywho, now I'm alone again, and some distant, over-curious part of me wants to sit down and dig my fingers into the dirt to reach for that pulse that lies beneath. But another part hopes that what I'm feeling is just a delusion, a trick of a confused mind. But I know it's real. This land breathes. It's all around us, a thing alive, and yet too immense for me to comprehend. I take another moment to stare at the figures that hang above, and they remain unchanged. A little bit of music. Raiden is mad at me as a little detour, and he won't stop muttering about those weird fucking scalpers. I understand. It was fucking weird. He walks within these palace walls like he wears a crown upon his head, and I struggle to keep up with him. He weaves in and out of passageways, steps through side doors, and hides in all the right dark corners, and all I can do is follow suit. It's a learning experience, to say the least. And sometimes you just get a little... Um, I know there are some jobs that have a newbie follow along with um, a veteran worker, and I think that, and sometimes that, that helps so much, and, and that is the case here. Suddenly a hand clenched over my mouth, and I know not to scream, not to make a sound, even if it is an enemy. I let myself get dragged backwards into a dark space between rooms, and I find that I register the familiar smell of leather and sword polish. 
Swish. Listen. Then the shutting of a door. We both peeked through a gap in the door that Raiden left a jar, and I managed to catch a glimpse of a familiar red cape disappearing into our room. Olivia? I longed to call out to her, my heart a hammer against my ribs. And then a flash of blue and gold, and Raiden edges closer. Lucian looks in our direction because, of course, they know we're in here. And I see a wicked grin before they, too, disappear into that very same room. So that would be Lucian and Vivia going to have the little chat that the ambassador is correct. Something's going on. In sense. Why would the king and queen have this meeting? Their room, I imagine. Come on, let's go look. I almost reached out and grabbed his elbow to stop him, but I think better of it. I need to trust him in his instinct. He knows this place better than he knows himself, I think. Another winding corridor, more commotion, more nights and messengers, frantically passing the field envelopes back and forth. Get him through it, pet traces us into another side corridor. He finally seems to calm. Stay close, it won't be long now. And he's right. The Vithrian knight appears, then the ambassador, and Raiden and I have a bird's eye view of the throne room from here, thanks to another strategic crack in a very pretty door. My breath catches when I see them sitting upon their gilded thrones. Welcome, my Vithrian friends. Two figures stand before him and his queen, their heads beautifully bowed. Queen Adora's smile is biting, wicked in a way that makes my skin crawl. But it's a word that falls from my lips that really chills me to my core. Kneel. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, I know it's kind of short, but um, the, the Nomad doesn't generally get to talk to Masha or Lydia um, unless they pick... Um, one or the other uh, at that at this point, but just the case here. So, um, yeah, that's it for Errant Kingdom so far. Um, hopefully, um, the rest of the game will be finished soon. I know they're hard at work on it. Um, I think the main thing is coding. Um, and kind of streamlining the story a bit. So, that's it for Ant Kingdom. I'd hope they'd have the rest of this by now, but obviously not. So, next week I'm going to play um, one of the Call Me Under demos. Um, the first one that was released, and then the week after I'll play the other demo that was released. Um, so you get an idea of, because um, there's two potential routes for coming under, but they're mutually exclusive, unlike with Ant Kingdom, where the storylines all kind of interweave with each other as we stream. Um, with Call Under, you, you play a human or a, what's called a sea, which is basically a sea person. Or in this case, you're a half a key person. Um, and you play one or the other. And uh, you play a human, the skia doesn't happen. If you play a skia, the human doesn't happen. So that's going to be fun. And um, that will also be voiced, uh, just like when the One the Night Plans revamp was. And they have uh, Robbie Damon playing the character of Blue. And uh, he's already done recorded at least I think for the demo he definitely recorded lines and he's the only character that's voiced but the other characters will be voiced and um, one of my favorite voice actresses is doing one of the voices so I'm super excited um, and Sunday I will finish up the main story for the When the Night Comes revamp and then uh, the following Sunday I will play the extras the what we call the DLC. And then um, I'll figure out what I'm going to do after that. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed yourselves and you have a good week whenever you watch this, whether it's now or later. And I will see you next time. Bye.